conversation forward about uh, rupee at 70, a crucial level that has been crossed. Avishek Goenka, the founder and CEO at uh, IFA Global, joining us here on Market Watch. Uh, good evening, Abhishek. This is Nantara from New Delhi. Okay, what is done is done. You did see rupee breach 70. You can blame it on the Turkish lira. Uh, but you know, the fact is, and we keep talking about this as well, that uh, is this even the true value of the rupee? Should it actually be 80? Should it actually be 90? And a lot of experts believe that that is where you might see the rupee come December near 80 levels. So I think it's not about blaming it to Turkish lira or any external factor. I think it's also because of the domestic imbalance that we have uh, developed over the period of time. Let's accept the fact that uh, you know, in the last 3-4 years, I mean, rupee had appreciated uh, uh, overall when you compare it with the basket of other currencies which typically um, we compare it with. In terms of real, of course, the rupee was overvalued by around 20%. And I think it's a fair correction when we are st st seeing our BOP actually deteriorating and we are seeing our uh, current account deficit, which I think uh, after meeting in the FDI flow, I feel if the deficit is close to $70 billion, I think we still see a gap of around 35 watt billion dollars so that's likely three billion dollars per month so and then unless we get that kind of money in terms of flows the the rpa needs to provide that money in form of selling of dollars and that's what they have been doing so i think uh, apart from the local uh, i mean the other international factor is of course creating a contagion with regards to other emerging market currency and to is to an extent with team to it but let's give the fact that since our local uh, macroeconomic situation, the fiscal situation, which is again deteriorating before elections, things are likely to deteriorate a lot on the fiscal side. Bank and PA situation not looking too good. I think rupee is likely to depreciate, and I think it's a good thing. I mean, to be remain competitive and uh, again to you know uh, uh, disallow unnecessary electronic items which is getting dumped into the country. I think the level of 71, 72. It's a fair thing when you compare to other basket of currencies for the country. All the exporters will be, you know, so happy with this. Uh, Anand Mahindra, for example, has already tweeted also saying, why are we crying? I could make India globally competitive. There's a chance to make in India. But that's a totally different uh, conversation to have. But Abhishek, do tell me, uh, if the government, because it's so concerned about the deficit and something the RBI is also very worried about, can we afford to keep propping up the repeat? Do you see the RBI doing that? Have you seen intervention today? Has it intervened to the tune of $30 billion in the last one month? And is it sustainable, not just because of where the Forex reserves are, it's more than $400 billion, but because we're also on the watch list of the United States for this very reason? So, uh, please understand that uh, they had intervened uh, yesterday. I mean, we get the numbers close to a billion dollars possibly. I mean, of course, there is no way to verify that before the actual numbers come in. And also, we saw some intervention today when the market went 70 plus levels. So, they have been doing their intervention. But please understand the quality of our reserves are not very great. I mean, there's a lot of uh, uh, risk that is running. And in case there is a contagion effect, RBI would uh, use those reserves very meticulously. And when you are sitting against the trend, like RBI was protecting the level of 69 for like a very, very long time. And time again, it had crushed speculators that rupee doesn't break 69. But once the global uh, mm, currencies took away, RBI couldn't do anything and left the rupee deficit. So I think the mandate that RBI has is a slow phase depreciation. But if the dollar index doesn't support you or the other emerging market or Asian currencies do not support you, obviously RBI would not like rupee to be uh, very, very overvalued. I mean, if a Chinese yuan hits a 7 plus, then obviously RBI would not like the rupee to come below 69 because it doesn't make any sense. So I think, uh, yes, it is trying to uh, uh, stop the rupee for an excessive depreciation that we saw in the years of 2013 or 2008 because then it creates a ripple effect because the levels of 70s create a trigger for a lot of uh, funds uh, especially the debt funds which are invested in India because the yields are also going up and also the equity funds which are invested in India they get panicky if the rupee starts depreciating above 70 because for them the alpha is totally lost which if you actually calculate over the last 4-5 years with the rupee depreciation they have not made a lot of money so 
70 breaks possibly that could create triggers and which can actually further create triggers to go to 72, 73. And that is what RBI is scared about. So I think they are intervening in a slow and steady fashion and they would be there in the market. But as I said, if other factors go against, they would let rupee depreciate. And it's a good thing to happen, I think. And regarding exporters, what you mentioned, I think it's a mixed bag. I mean, I, I heard you mentioning some names uh, right now in terms of textiles and other uh, industry. So let me tell you uh, that most of the textile companies are actually covered to the extent of 70-80% of the yearly exposure in the market. So so uh, if any depreciation comes in, it will the effect that they're going to get is only in the next year. Because for this year, possibly 70-80% is covered. So even though they are very happy in terms of... Uh, the, the rupee is staying at 70, but then the rupee actually has to stay above 70, 72 levels for some time. And they might get a gap of 6 8 months where they can actually make use of that particular rate. Otherwise, the rate gets revised with their buyers. So it might be beneficial for firms which are not covered aggressively, but the firms which are going to cover aggressively is just an opportunity loss for them. And regarding importers, I would say that most of the importers policy of covering one to two months of imports. So with this depreciation, most of the importers would be either passing on the inflated cost to the public or would be taking the brand on the books. So excessive depreciation too fast is obviously not very good for any exporter in the country. Yes, if it stays there, they might make some gains, but uh, otherwise for this year, I think a lot of people are covered. Right, Abhishek, thanks so much uh, for that. Let's also listen into the DEA Secretary, my colleague Ritu, caught up with him on the same issue.